hello, everybody. Welcome to Linked Ladies Loose and Live. I'm Melinda Ward, and I am joined by Vanessa Ashworth and Sarah Farmer. And we are your working from home team. We are giving you the support and the enthusiasm that you need to get yourself through the week on a positive note. And we want to give you lots of good ideas, as well as that feeling of being in a team and having people to talk to, even when you're working from home, because that's something that I think a lot of us relish working from home. Uh, but there's the personal element is the bit that kind of falls a bit flat because, well, I talk to my cats, but they don't talk back much. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, they do talk back, but I'm just not understanding their language. Well enough. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> um, let us know you are here. Please give us a comment in your whichever chat forum you are using, uh, whether it's LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook, and we will be happy to hear from you. Just so you know, some people had asked before and said, oh, well, can you see us or do you know we're there? We don't know you're there unless you put something in the comments. So give us a comment if you've joined us live. And if you're watching us on replay, then hashtag replay would be great so that we know that you've seen us. Now, we've got some great content for you today. Um, in about 10 minutes, we're going to be uh, passing over to Vanessa Ashworth, who is our expert marketer, and she is going to be talking about value propositions. Now, value propositions are not just for marketing, although obviously they're critical for marketing. They're also good for everybody, even if you aren't looking to market yourself as your own business, because they're excellent if you are looking to market ideas and programs and things like that within your job in general. So it's something that everybody can use and everyone can leverage to their own advantage. Uh, we've also got some big news coming up today. Um, we'll be getting through the introduction soon and then Sarah Farmer has some information for us on how we're gonna carry on the evolution of this program. Because we've started out as more of like a social chatty forum with a little bit of business help, but we've now realized that our audience really is enjoying that business help that we're providing. So we're expanding that and we've got some great ideas for coming up programs and we're going to focus more on answering questions, bringing in guest speakers and focusing on specific topics. And this is going to come with a name change. So Sarah will spill the beans on that in just a few minutes. So we've got lots of people to say hello to today. Uh, we've got, let's see, let me scroll down the list here. We've got Tracy and Joe and Louise and John and Yvonne. I feel like it's the Mickey Mouse show. I see, <laughs> I see Jeff and I see you know, Gary. We've got Yvonne Winter. Great to be Nice to have you, Yvonne. We've got our very own Mr. Beecham. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, he is the manufacturer's recruiter. So if you're in manufacturing and you need some recruitment help, this is your man. He's a wonderful human. Um, we've also got Gary. And hi, Gary. Thanks for joining us. Nice to see some men on the show. We've had lots of questions about is it for men or for women. Uh, it's for men and anything in between, uh, we don't mind. Um, Joanne, thanks for joining us again. And we have another gentleman, Mr. Steve Mills. Hi, Steve. Thanks for joining us. Right, let me just scroll down. Lots of people in. We have... It's right. so nice to see. It obviously also tells us that we are actually live this time. Yes, we're live. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> Helen joining us. Thank you for joining us, Helen. Uh, we've got Denise. Uh, from from Houston. Houston. Hi to Houston. Uh, US represented. Yeah, that's brilliant. It's nice to know we are reaching the other side. And Alan, you've joined us. Hey, good afternoon to you. Um, thank you. Uh, Alan was also asking whether this was just for ladies or not. No, you do not need to be blonde and female or pretend blonde and female to be in uh, in this crew. Um, hi, I should introduce this crew actually a little bit more formally. We've got Vanessa Ashworth, who is our expert marketer, and um, she's the one who will be our featured speaker today. And then we have Sarah Farmer, who is an executive and leadership coach extraordinaire. And Sarah is oh, the one. I should add that to my profile. Thank you. Exactly. Guru, almost. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, uh, we should pass over to Sarah right now so that you can carry on and tell us the big news. The big news. Can I just say hello to Kathleen as well? Hi, oh, yeah. Absolutely. And also uh, uh, Belgium. Um, Kishore here as well. Thank you for joining us, Kishore. And Welcome, everybody. Amy's joined us from sunny St Albans. Oh, I don't know if I've said this before, Amy, but I used to live in St Albans. I love it. Anywho, that's not relevant. Uh, what is relevant is um, about a week ago, I put out a post asking you, lovely lot, for your help in rebranding us, re renaming us for what we actually want to do, which is Melinda's already beautifully explained. Oh, dear. It's about there we go. You're back. A bit of chit chat. It's also about helping you learn, develop, grow, thrive. And so many of you um, actually came up with some wonderful names. And we've come to a difficult decision because actually we've ended up with two winners, um, neither of which have actually been the name because we've changed it slightly. But because of their ideas, we've come up with the name that we want. So should I do the new name first? Or no? I'll let me let me tell you who's won first. So. The, the prize was going to be either a bottle of bubbly or a £25 voucher for whatever you want. Marks and Spencers, I don't mind. Wherever you are in the world, you get a £25 voucher. Um, and the two people that contributed to the new name are Ian Croft. So thank you to Ian. You are a winner. Woo! And he had, Ian put forward loads of ideas. Ian, and, and there's a lot of really good ones within that. So well done, Ian. Thank you. He really right. got us thinking, didn't he? He really got us thinking. And he threw mm. in some really different ones as well. And we just loved those. So that really helped us. Um, and then also Matt Price um, put one in as well, which actually we've taken half of that name and we've added to some of Ian's. And we've come up with... I've got to hope people aren't disappointed now it's in this round roll. Um, we wanted to capture the fact that we connect you, we help you learn, and we help you thrive in this crazy environment that we still seem to be living in, which will stay as it is for a while. And also kind of try and capture the idea that it's kind of like a lunch and learn session, so that every time you join us, you will have something to take away that you can use in your business, in your corporate life, or in whatever you do. So. Exactly. So personal or business professional, uh, it's going to help you grow and develop. Ashley's a bit annoyed. He didn't know there was going to be a competition. <laughs> Ashley, you did not read my post last week. Where were you? You should be hanging on the every word, surely. I was going to say, that that's a, that's a good, good reason to follow all of us on LinkedIn <laughs> if you aren't already, because uh. there can be prizes. So drum roll. So we have gone for the business brunch. Now, send us a smile or something or a thumbs up or a what the heck are you doing, ladies? Business, because it's business focused. We are business people. Uh, we wanted to move away from the fact there are three blondes on a screen because that's not what this is about. This is about humans helping humans in a professional capacity. We're all grown ups, although we've decided Melinda's the real grown up because she's <laughs> more sensible than us. Um, <laughs> and we love you for that. But the business branch, and it's all about connecting, learning, and thriving. So this will be our new name. Um, and we hope that resonates with people that this is a business professional environment where you can have some fun, you can connect, but you're going to learn something that you can use. Helen Lowe likes it. Cool. Thank yep, you. And, and there's no kind of gender limitations or implied restrictions there. Um, and brunch can be really any time of the day. So anybody who's far east of us in Asia Pacific region, doesn't matter what time of day it is, you can join anytime. Gary loves a nice brunch, yes. Thank you, so Joe likes it. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Denise, give a thumbs up over from Houston. So thank you very much, I'm glad you like it. And yes. Louise likes it as well, good. <sighs> you. Yay. Um, <laughs> good. Just as well, because we've done the artwork. Well, Vanessa's done the artwork, so that's good. And uh, and Amy, I'm sorry you didn't win, Amy, but thank you for getting stuck in anyway. Is it mm. bottomless? The brunch. The bottomless brunch. I'm sorry. I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's never ending. It's never ending. There's There's all those ideas content. are going to keep coming at you. Yes. It's the fizzy it's content that'll get you. So. Very good, very good. So thank you for your support, everyone that helped us there, everyone who gave us some ideas. But the two winners are Ian Croft and Matt Price. Mwah, thank yay. you. Prize is coming your way. I'll DM you privately if you're not here. And it's a yay from Ashley in Leeds. Good o. 
Right. Excellent. So we should probably take a couple of minutes before, just to kind of keep a little bit of tradition going. Uh, we should probably do the quick loop round for the weekend. And just for a couple of minutes before we launch into Vanessa's focus topic for the week. So Vanessa, what did you get up to this weekend? I went, so, so I got to the weekend as I always do, and I didn't have Alistair this weekend. And I got to Friday and thought, ah, uh, I've been working so hard all week. I've forgotten to plan anything. And so I had nothing to do Friday, but that's not a bad thing. But Saturday, I went to an 18th birthday party. My word, <laughs> when I opener that was, goodness me. <laughs> I don't know many 18-year-olds. And I got there and it seems that if you're 18 and female, when you turn 18, all your clothes fall off. <laughs> it's amazing. Woo! Um, once I've got over the whoa bit, like, whoa, really? Um, there was a bit of, I felt more of a, at first it was a bit of a shock. I'm so old. Um, and, but then I kind of, it was more of a celebration. I thought, well, yeah, why can't we all share, show our bodies and, and be brave with it? Why not? And what I liked about it, which is different to, I think, when I was young, even though we've got that Instagram, everyone has to be perfect thing going on. Um, what I loved is that even, even the bigger girls were all wearing tiny dresses too. And it was completely, completely okay and accepted and the norm. And I yeah. thought, wow, that's, we've come such a long way yeah, that's in thinking that everybody is a beach body, you know, and I absolutely loved that. And so it didn't take me long to get to the point where I was actually celebrating this, I, I this, was, this well, gorgeousness that was before me. It was fabulous. <laughs> but also, I also felt I'm, I'm glad that I'm covered up because I'm, I'm not there anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to say hey, hey to Louise, and I thought you were going to say then, Vanessa, that you, it didn't take you long to get half naked. Oh, no. I'm glad. <laughs> no, no. I'm glad to hear that you are Amazon you're from that. So what have you guys been up to this weekend as well? I've just put a message in the chat, but I've realised that I can't do that because I'm on YouTube for some reason. Anywho. <laughs> uh, but what have you guys been up to this weekend? Um, but it also meant I actually got a chance to do lots of dancing, so it was brilliant. Oh. So I was on the dance floor all night. Oh, oh lovely. That's so, yes. so, nice. so fun. So fun. Um, trying to think, what did I do this weekend that's actually worth sharing? Oh, no, I did have a nice time. I spent some quality time with my son. I got him out of his room, off his bed, out of his bed, clean, deodorant on, I think. And we, he went for a haircut, but that took ages. Then we went out for lunch and we talked like humans. Uh, and it was really nice. Just, nice and just spend some quality time with him. Um, yeah, and the rest of the time was spent doing a bit of work and reading stuff and doing all sorts of fun things. But yeah, what about you, Melinda? I went to, uh, joined a couple friends on Saturday and went to a musical that we've actually had tickets for for two years and we <laughs> finally got to go. But it was a bit poignant because it was bad out of hell. And so, of course, because Meatloaf passed away at the end of last week, and then to go to the show that was the tribute to his music, oh, wow. um, it was quite timely um, and quite a powerful show. So um, it's playing in Wimbledon at the moment, but they're to it's a touring production because they've come off uh, out of the West End. So I can say if it comes to your local area, it's definitely worth going to see. It's a tremendous production with some great... Uh, great, great performances. Wow. But we've got a couple people here in the comments who are sharing with us. And Louise Brown, wow, ran the Farnborough Half Marathon. That's just at the road, from you, Louise. I'm, I'm in uh, just outside Godalming, so uh, I'm not too far from you. That's impressive. And it yeah, was bravo. Cool. Yeah, bravo. well done, you. And uh, <laughs> hi, Chris. Chris has just, just stopped in during lunch and I hear about beach bodies. Well, no wonder you stayed. <laughs> I, I've, I've got really bad news for you. You ain't seen nothing here. This is all very professional. Um, what's Ashley been up to? Ashley decorated two two bedrooms. Are you just showing off, buddy? Right? Uh, freshened up actually. It's only a bit of painting, but looking great upstairs. Oh, well done. I bet you're nice very, yeah. very pleased with yourself about that. Uh, well done, Louise from Tracy. Good support. That's the other thing. This is all about. It's a community of people that that support each other. Oh, Joe was heartbroken about the news of me. I didn't even know. Um, she's going to the show at the end of Feb. Oh, you'll love it. You'll love yeah, it. It's, it's really powerful, the show. Yeah, I think. I should have come too. Mm. Yeah, I don't do running. Um, <laughs> I 
I could walk it fast, but I don't do any. My knees are absolutely rubbish. I found um, out that dancing is <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> After the first couple of dances, then and then something terrible came on. So I went and sat down and I thought, oh, oh, I can feel my knees. <laughs> I never used to feel my knees before. This is bad. I need to up my fitness if I'm going to do more dancing. I'd just like to say hello to the lovely Danielle. Thanks for joining us, Danielle. Danielle is usually either helping out on some sort of COVID front, helping people get uh, vaccinations, or she's working her butt off. So I'm really pleased you can make it today, Danielle. It's lovely to know you're there. Um, oh, Cynthia, yes, continue on. 63 pages. Very Ooh. good. Very good. Okay, now I feel... Bad. I need to get on with it. No, thank you. I feel better. Uh, oh, Chris is back. <laughs> Chris, I think I'm wrong idea of the show, but I like I like the thing. After I was on the beach, I was asked how to leave because. Of... Oh, Chris! No. <laughs> stop, stop, stop! But funny though. Uh, we spent weekend in bed. Oh. With... Oh. 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 That's not good. Hope you're feeling better today, lovely. Yeah. 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 Soul. Uh, I walked. Oh, alpaca. nice! Oh, hi, Donna. Nice to you join us. And lovely that you walked an alpaca. We've got an alpaca farm just at the road from us. Actually, I've uh, never done it, but and Julia, I rode in a ladies' quad. Goodness me, you lot are all so busy. Uh, I rode in a ladies' quad in Northampton. Took my dog as a golf dog to the course for the first time. Pebble mini, ah, oh, mini schnauzer, so cute. I've got two miniature um, chihuahuas. Um, Joe did a different client meeting yesterday. We walked around Coombe Abbey whilst. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Really good. Yeah. A bit of a walk and talk. I love walking, that. Walking meetings are great. But speaking of meetings and business, it is time to get going with our topic of the day. Can I just so, say, before we do go serious, Jeff and Chris, if you ever want to talk about beach bodies, you've now found your friend. All right. <laughs> you can now talk to each other. All right. Sorry, Melinda. Oh, it's a great. I think we are ready, Vanessa. Are you ready to dazzle us with brilliance about value propositions? I'm, I'm not sure about dazzling with brilliance, but I will do my best Ooh, to yeah. tell you what is a value proposition, why you might need one, what do you do with it once you've found it, and then the, the gold bit, how do you find yours? Oh, goody. Okay, so that's what we're going to aim. Um, please do get involved in the comments, ask any questions, share any thoughts, and maybe share how you found yours, maybe, and help everybody else, because this is a community. And I will try and target this um, kind of both to kind of organizations, but also to small entrepreneurs and individuals as well. So hopefully everyone will get something from it. But in 10 minutes, boxed up, here it comes. Uh, Can I ask a question? Sorry, I just put my hand up like I was at school. Sorry, I've covered you up with my notes, so I didn't see your question. Sorry. I also just want to say that it, this is, um, I think about this is really important as a personal brand as well. So if you're looking for a job um, and you are now selling you, you are the prize, as our yeah. John Walker would say, um, then this is really important for you to understand your own value proposition so you can use this wherever you are in your life whatever you're doing it's um it's not just for christmas is it it's for mm -hmm. actually right. before we get on very quickly uh, johnny walker who you've just mentioned has a, a five day challenge that starts today and if you oh. get in contact with him you might just be able to get on yeah. um, but he is actually helping individuals to find pretty much their value proposition over the course of this week and it's free and so it's look up johnny walker the five yeah, this is the five piece. It's the five yeah. challenge. Um, <clears throat> but if, as an individual, if it's something that you want to kind of look at, um, you might be able to get on his course. But let's uh, let's crack on okay. um, with what is a value proposition. So what is it? So it should really clearly and succinctly tell your audience how you are going to relieve their pain. So it's a value promise. What is the value you offer to your customer or to the person you're meeting? Or, um, <clears throat> yeah, basically, it's just whoever your customer is, it tells them how you're going to relieve their pain. And should also, if it's a really good one, set you apart from the competition and make you stand out. So that's it, really. It encapsulates how you solve your customer's pain better than anyone else, and it differentiates you from the competition. So it's not, I'm really good at marketing, so hire me to do your marketing. 
because it's not about you. It's not about what you do. It's about your customer. Um, so you really do need to understand who your customer is. So if you've got a kind of a fluffy business plan uh, and you've not niched down to understand who your target customer is, you need to do that piece of work first. And I'm going to show you a little bit how you do that. Um, so it's um, an example. Um, just as I said, I'm, it's not I'm a marketer or I'm not an executive coach. It's more I'm going to help you realize your full potential or I'm going to help you become the five second decision maker. Do you see how you put a number in there? It makes that value so much more tangible. If you think if, if Sarah, for example, you take Sarah on and she's going to make you become the five second decision maker, you can then start thinking about the value that that brings to the wider organization. It's not just making the individual more productive. It's making them more powerful. It's giving them more time to look at other uh, decisions. It means that they'll get more respect within their, their company. So if you can hone in on a particular value, you can then explore the wider uh, implications of how valuable that is. So it's not I'm a marketer or I'm an executive coach. It's about the value that you deliver to that person. So that's what a value proposition is. So if we should look at a couple of examples. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. Put my hand up again. I'm sorry, I can't see you. I've got you covered up with my notes. Oh, well, that's really rude. <laughs> I could be doing all sorts of things and you wouldn't know. I know, I know. I did when you said the five-second decision maker was, thank you. Oh, my goodness, you've just given me a name for something. Um, and that's what I was going to ask you. Oh, can you have more than one? Yes, you can. If, if you think about... So, so I, I offer marketing services, yeah? So I could think, okay, for this next six months, I'm going to talk about value propositions and that's going to be my thing and how what value I can give to you by helping you with that. And then I can think, oh, actually, you know, I've done that now. And next I'm going to talk about customer journey mapping. And so I'm going to change my value proposition then to talk about that. So you can have more than one. And as Melinda said, you can think about it for specific actions and specific aims that you want to achieve. So when you go to a job for this, for example, your value proposition, again, should be understanding what problem you're solving to that company. And so it is going to change with every CV that you send. Oh, yeah. So that top line underneath your name should be the value proposition targeted at the job that you're going for and the pain that your role is going to deliver. But also, it, you know, it can be for a customer, but it can be for the different products and services as well. So you can have lots of value propositions. Yeah, and it works, that works too. If you're trying, even if you are thinking of it at a slightly smaller level, you're trying to pitch a project or a concept to upper management or a client or whatnot, if you go in with this mindset and with this research, mm -hmm. then it can help you persuade people to take the action that you want them to take. Absolutely. It's all about understanding the customer and their pains. Mm -hmm. If you go in thinking what you can do, you're already losing. If you think about the customer, the pains, their bigger picture, what they can get from this and how they're going to benefit it, it's a totally different mindset it's a totally different messaging and you're in a totally different place so that's uh, that's what it's all about really okay so let's look at a couple of examples i'm going to show you mine um so i so my superpower i realized is taking kind of complex ideas and paragraphs of information and bringing it into something small, tight, and pithy that you can remember. And, and that's why I offer value propositions as one of my services. Mm -hmm. So mine is, ooh, I step in to make you stand out. And I came up with that in seconds. So the pain that I am solving for my customer is visibility. They want themselves, their company, their product to be visible to their ideal client and cut through the noise so I help you stand out. It is a little bit cleverer than that as well, because it also tells you how I do it. And as an interim, I step in. And then I step back again once I've done it. Mm -hmm. So that's mine. Um, if you think about Uber, so theirs is very clever. It's the smartest way to get around. It doesn't say that they're a taxi company. 
it talks about getting around, but it's the smart way. So if you think about it, it's from a smartphone and everything you need is here. You know exactly when that taxi is going to arrive. You know where it is. You don't have to ring up and say, where are you? Oh, it's five minutes away. None of that. You don't have to mess around with change and have I, have I got cash? So it doesn't matter if you spent all your money in an evening because your phone's going to take care of that because the app it will help you pay. So it's the smart way to get around. It encapsulates beautifully what they do. Um, Slack, um, Slack is really good as well. So it's a communication channel, uh, but it doesn't say that. It says, be more productive with less effort, which is beautiful, isn't it? Again, it doesn't say how. It's mm. just with less effort and we all want to be more productive. They actually bring that down to a slogan as well to be even tighter with be less busy which is quite beautiful, isn't it? We all want to be less busy. So so you, when you start to find your value proposition, you might start with long sentences and a paragraph to kind of understand. But if you can get it to be really short and succinct, then you're going to remember it. And it's going to help you so much more and give you so much more clarity uh, when you're talking to people, if you've got that really punchy message behind you. So... Why do you need one? <clears throat> Can I just say that um, Kim, Kim saying she absolutely loves yours, catchy and says a lot, it's really good. And if you are listening to this and you've got uh, a value proposition or you're trying to get one, why don't you write it in, in the um, uh, comments now? Because you've got someone here that can help you immediately for free. So use, right. use and abuse her. Well, don't abuse her, just use her. Um, while you've got her and, and I'm sure Melinda and I can chip in and add something if we wanted to as well but um, yeah very good thank you uh, thanks Kim okay okay cool so moving on moving on so why do you need one well obviously it's going to clearly differentiate you from your competitors and from everyone else it's going to make you stand out in all the noise but it also helps you to get heard as well because you're saying something that resonates with that person's need so it's it's really good it becomes the foundation then for your communications it could be your website as i showed you it's on my business card i use obviously both sides one for the contact information one for what i do um, so it should be on your website it should be on your business card your headline and your banner on LinkedIn. When, so when you go to the put, it should be, as we said, it should be really short and really pithy. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you think about employee branding, if you're in a larger organization, if it's really clear what you do, if it's really short and pithy, all your employees can remember it and it resonates with them. And if you think about when you go to the pub or you're at a dinner party or, or whatever, and somebody says to you, what do you do? It's your answer. So if you remember the, the story that's told about the, the cleaner at NASA and when somebody said to him, what do you do? And he said, I help to put men on the moon. You know, he doesn't talk about cleaning. He talks about the value that he brings. And, and this is, you know, how to be more impactful and how to get that message across. And, and a value proposition will underpin all your communications. So you could create your first campaign all about it. That's your messaging. That's your Facebook ad. That's your LinkedIn ad. Uh, you know, and uh, and that's your you know that should help you lead your content strategy as well and all your messages. So that's why you need one, and that's how you use it. So let's get to uh, very quickly. Okay, can I show you Ash Ashley's? Yeah, yeah. he's he's um, said. Uh, what do you think of mine? I guess it's too vague. I'm the 15 minute guy, getting you loving LinkedIn in just 15 minutes a day, or your money back. No, it, it, it doesn't matter because that's the value you're bringing. You're helping us to love LinkedIn really quickly. And then we're going to look to find out how. Um, but I think that the 15 minute guy is brilliant because it just it, it, it drags you in. You want to know more. And 15 minutes, that's attractive because we're all busy, aren't we? We're all so busy. So and again, giving you that number makes your message so much more tangible and so much more kind of valuable for that. So, so I like yours. And Ashley, I'm glad we squeezed you in there. Ashley does go off at one because he has a, he has a date. Um, <laughs> it's, it's true. So he thinks the brunch should be from twelve till one. We'll, we'll think about it, lovely. We'll think about it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Ashley. We'll see you next time. Um, really? Just got something else up from Alan as well. Too many organisations have things like to be the best provider of dot 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 in the world, wishy washy, directionless, and meaningless. Totally with you, Alan. It, it's a real cop out, and it, to me, that just shows that. They haven't grasped the concept of what va what value they bring. 
they don't know what it is yet. And they don't know, and I was going to ask you, Vanessa, as well, is when you're saying um, about the value proposition, it isn't just I'm a coach or I'm a marketer. It's Is it about the why or is it just about the how that should be in there? So it's, it, it's got to start with your customer's pain. It's what value you bring to them. And that's the absolute key. So you need to you need to know why you're in business. You need to know why you do it because I think it's not only that value proposition, the value that they're going to get. It's also what sets you apart, what makes you different. So if you know your why, if you have done that values exercise to to understand why you're different, for example, it doesn't come across in mine, but hopefully it comes across with me. My one of my key value is joy. And so you should know, or that should say something, that working with me is going to be fun. Not necessarily going to be easy, and it doesn't mean I'm going to shy away from anything difficult, and there aren't going to be difficult times ahead. But largely, it's going to be fun because my value is joy. And But other people have different things, so it's really, uh, it is, I would say, kind of do a values exercise and understand of what your why is because that's that differentiator part yeah i mean this to me what alan's just talked about is the it's just really lazy world leading yeah. everyone's I'm world the best at yeah. all, you know prove it and actually you're making i really need to go back and look at my profile now <laughs> uh, yeah thanks alan, for sharing that it's a really good point and ashley's probably gone but he says bless oh. you oh oh sweet <laughs> so yeah so let's talk about how you're going to find it and where you start so um I use this book, um, which is a value proposition design. But um, you don't have to buy the book um, because if you Google value proposition canvas or other search engines are available. So if you look for value proposition canvas, you will find this tool. Oh, let me just put you on. Um... Oh, no, I don't, sorry. I, don't, I want you. Oh, I don't know how to get you back. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I don't know if that's any better. There yeah, we that's go. a bit better. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll duck behind it and then I can see. Okay, so you start from this side. Oh, no, you don't. You start from... <laughs> I hate mirrored things. So you start from uh, this part here. So you talk about the um, the customer. So understand who your customer is. And then, I've, I've written all over this book now, so you better use this because I've, I've defaced my book for this. Um so think about your customers' jobs. So not just the bits that you do to help, but their whole, everything that they do. And there you kind of start building this bigger picture of your customer. And then when you think about the pains that they have, uh, you know, the things that make business difficult, and then you can start thinking about from that, the gains, you know, when everything's running smoothly, this is where they're in their happy place. Once you've got that fuller picture of your customer, you can then understand when you're looking at your products and services and how they relieve some of those pains and create those gains and really make your customer happy. You can see that value in the bigger picture of everything that your customer does and how it impacts in, in, in many more places. So it's, it's really good to get that, that whole picture of your customer and not just think about the product that you have and the solution you have to this particular problem, but think about that whole, um, the whole of your customer. Then you can see how impactful your um, gain creators are. So that's so. Have a look um, for value proposition canvas on oh there on the search engines, and you'll find this. It's a really useful tool. So that's a really practical way of finding what your value is. The second thing that I like to do is to work on that differentiator part. So if you are a larger organization, the good thing to do is get some key people into a meeting room. So it could be the MD, your chief sales guy, someone in finance, people who face customers, so the customer service advisors, the receptionist, marketers, get, get a, a good few kind of spokespeople in, in a room. Put on a wall um, four headings, one brand, one product or service, three, the, the, your service level, so how you deliver that service, and four, people. Get everybody busy with, with these wonderful things, <laughs> um, post-it notes, and get everybody to write 
When you think about your brand, what word do you think about? So for brand, for the product or service, for the way you deliver your service and for your people. Once you've done that, keep your business, your post-it notes and then write what do you what words do your customers associate with your brand, your product, the way you deliver your service and what you are like to work with. What is it? How is it? What, what's your experience of working with your team? What do you think your customers think about that? So get lots of words on a board. Then if you are the kind of business um, where um, three proposal, proposals need to be on a table. So there might be like five or six big competitors in your space. Then think about your competitors and do the same thing. Uh, maybe if you're going to line yourself up against one key competitor, Think about the words that you think or that the market thinks about their brand, their technology, their product service, the way their service levels are and what they are like to work with as a team. From that, then, you're going to have that the differentiation of words to differentiate you from your competitor. And you can have a really good discussion then. Take down all the post-its that you don't all agree on. And what you will find is there'll be a couple where everyone goes, yes, yes, that's us. There's always some kind of gold dust in that kind of meeting. And that will give you uh, more idea about your culture and who you are as a business, which differentiates you from the competition. And those are the words that you need to put into your value proposition and on your website to talk about how you help and who you are. Wow. So, can I just, can I just, um, uh, Cynthia's, uh, that's brilliant. I love that exercise uh, and I love a flip chart and I love sticky notes. So I'm all over that. I'm all over it. It's a, it's a trainer's and a coach's dream. Um, Cynthia's asked you a question. Uh, nature of my work, there's no specific timeline. Is that really an issue? Um, so this is Cynthia's. Is helping corporations solve gender diversity issues using acceptance without understanding. Okay, so you're it's helping to solve gender diversity. It says exactly what you do. Do you mean um, with understanding? Yeah, I'm thinking without is maybe not the right word. Helping corporations solve gender diversity issues using acceptance might be with. Yeah, I'm hoping okay. it's with. Okay. <laughs> you will accept. You don't have to understand. <laughs> you just have to accept. <laughs> so I don't think it's, it's, it's the right one, but... So is is there a timeline that's needed? I don't think there's a timeline. Um, I don't have a timeline on mine because mm. I'm thinking sometimes it can take three months for someone to go from A to B. Sometimes it can take a year. Sometimes it'll be, I've just taken a company that's gone from around 5 million in worth to 30 million in worth over two years. Um, yeah. But they're it's not, nature, it just yeah. it changes, doesn't it? It's the nature of your service. If your service is that you'll work with a company for a long time, then then there is no timeline. I think if, if you can put a number to it, just with anything, it just makes it more tangible. I don't have a number with mine, and I don't have a timeline with mine because you can take me on for one job, one project, and then it's done. Or we can have a running contract. You know, so so if you if your service isn't timeline oriented then you don't need one but if you can put a number it just makes it more tangible i had a feeling having just read this again um and cynthia's just come in so she might be able to explain this but are you helping corporations solve this problem because they don't currently have understanding um this without understanding maybe that means that they don't have it but actually it's interesting isn't it how one word can change everything um, uh, and change the meaning. So let me just see what Cynthia says. You start without understanding and grow to understanding, but you start, okay, so that's interesting. So that word actually you saw from the three of us all going, what? Mm. But actually might need some thought. I'm not the marketeer, but, um, <laughs> but I'm an NLP practitioner where I look at words and, and meanings and we've got to be really careful with the words that we use to get the meaning across. Um, but thanks Cynthia for sharing that. I hope that's helpful. And get in touch with um, Vanessa if you need some more help with that. Um, I also find person-to-person -person engagement in soliciting customer feedback to be not only richest in content and value, but often results in a much better relationship when the mm -hmm. feedback is considered and responded to, re-engaging with the, this is what you, yeah, absolutely. This is what you, it, well, I, I can see the rest of it. It says, this is what you told us. This is of what we are doing is hugely valuable in solidifying relationships as well as developing brand and value offering. Absolutely. And if clients or customers give feedback and then see action coming out of that, 
then they feel even more connected and invested in the brand. So that's a very, very yeah, good Yeah, no, point. absolutely. You have to know your customer. And if you're going to try and play with words to what do customers think about us, then you need to talk to your customer. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and it's, it's, you know, and that's the, it's the first line of, of, of any marketing activity, isn't it, is to know your customer. Uh, so absolutely. And, and I think um, just kind of on that, which I'd forgotten to say, you might, when you do the exercise, think about there's somewhere in your business where you know you need to get better. Um, and, you know, if your service delivery is actually, you, you've got a relationship for bad service delivery, then maybe you use your value proposition to inform people that you're working on it. Or, you know, you can you can add some vision, uh, forward vision into your value proposition to recognize you know, what you're striving for. Because if customers have a problem with it, uh, then you're kind of solving that problem and, and you're showing them that you're listening, you're listening to what they say and you're working on it. So that's good PR as well. Yeah, because yeah. that's a really common problem with rapidly growing companies, especially like business to business companies, mm -hmm. where suddenly you get traction and you get lots of sales, which is great, but you don't yet have the infrastructure to support all that delivery. And, you know, the help desk side isn't quite, up to the, the scale it needs to be. The implementation team isn't to the scale it needs to be. And customers notice that. And it, you know, obviously it's important to remedy those things, but it's also important to let people know you've heard them and that you're working on it and not just quietly do it in the background. Because if people don't know you've heard them and they're working on it, then they won't change how they think and they won't change how they talk about you to others when they're asked. Yeah, Alan's another good point. Um, internal voice of the customer boards can focus staff. It really can. And I, I, a post I wrote at the beginning, of, I think it was this week, about a particular survey that I was asked to fill in after buying something where the internal voice of the customer was not going to be heard because we weren't supposed to be giving the feedback we wanted to give, otherwise it would affect oh, yeah. the bonus of the salesperson who sold this thing to me. So having an organisation that actually uses these customer boards properly I think he's already on a great track. And those that don't, oh, get some help, seriously. Yeah. So um, we've got three minutes left in our show. Uh, Vanessa, do you have any closing words of wisdom that you haven't yet shared? Or no, I think that was it. I wanted to say what it is, why you need one, how you use it, and how you find it. Uh, so again, look up value proposition canvas, because that's a really nice exercise to practically understand what your value really is there you and go can you, use that, you can use that if you are looking for a job for yourself as the value proposition me as a loan consultant or someone in a big corporate environment it's, is it the same process yeah yeah it, it's understanding that problem that you solve so it's, it's yeah. a good way of looking at that larger picture first to hone in and, and this is why on linkedin everyone will say niche down niche down but it's so important you know if i if I'd started on LinkedIn just talking about marketing, I wouldn't have got the visibility I have now, but I picked what I wanted to talk about. And the, the, the problem that I honed in on was customer journey mapping and why companies needed that. And that then became, made me known as a marketer, not as a, as a customer journey mapping person as well, but I stood out because I was talking about something specific. You so also stood out because you tend to talk about it walking outside being blown in all the elements uh, in the rain and everything else so how how you appear is massively important um just before we finish can i just uh, anybody that's still there watching this or listening in have you found that useful what else would you like to know i'm sure how how useful have you found that is what i mean um, yeah. is is this something you can use you know you can watch this back again if you've missed anything and you want to i know i'm going to watch this bit again and get it really in my head what else do you want to know from a marketing front? Because Vanessa's going to come back again and again and again. Not every week doing Just can't that. get rid of me. Sorry, no. But, you know, she's here. So what do you, What else do you want to know? Let us know that or, or maybe get in touch with Vanessa directly. Um, and let's just see. Uh, Jess saying thanks for sharing expertise. Mm -hmm. Great show, ladies. Have a great week. Absolute pleasure, Jeff. Thank you for joining. Yes, and just a reminder, uh, if you've enjoyed our all the, the information and wisdom that Vanessa shared. Uh, do follow her on LinkedIn and all the other customary platforms and follow the rest of us for different angles on 
executive coaching and leadership for Sarah and uh, consulting and business strategy is my jam. So we look forward to seeing you next week with our shiny new name. And thank you very much, everybody, for joining. Yeah, Much appreciated. We're glad you're here. Yeah, Have a great you. week. And to just say goodbye to Chris and uh, look forward to hearing more about your beach um, escapades on another, on another time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Well done, Vanessa. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Vanessa. It's been Happy really time. helpful. Bye, all. Bye. Oh, sorry.